Let me ask every one of you here a question. What is the difference between willing to being willing to give your life up for a cause and you just intentionally taking your life? What is the difference? Can a person who is truly born again commit suicide? Can a person who commits suicide in Christ, are they automatically doomed to go to hell? And I want you to think about this because a lot of this can be answered within this and some of it will gender more questions. And I want you to think about what you're saying because if we have to be very careful about saying absolutes. Now, it's clear that if a person who's not born again, who does not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, commits suicide, it's a done deal. He is going to hell. He or she is going to hell. That's just the way it is. You know, so we have to deal with the issue of can a person who is truly born again commit suicide? And what is the difference between laying your life down and suicide? Because sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two. Sometimes you cannot. So who makes that determination before God? So I'm going to tie this together to a scripture that we want to talk about. And it's going to be in the book of Judges, chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse number 23. Now, this is after Samson's encounter with Delilah. And what happens during this thing, let's deal with this real quick. We deal with Samson's encounter with Delilah. And the Philistines catch him and they, and they take his eyes out and they put him in bondage. But before we do that, let's give the definition of what suicide is. It says the act or an instance of taking one's own life voluntarily and intentionally. Now, people commit spiritual suicide all the time. And sometimes you can actually commit suicide over a course of time when you do the wrong things and you can slowly, a person can slowly kill themselves. But we're talking about immediate effect here. All right. So the act or an instance of taking one's own life voluntarily and intentionally. So let's read the book of Samson. It's going to gender so if you haven't read it before in this context, it might gender some questions and cause you to really see God as to what is going on. Judges 16, verse 23 says, Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice for unto Dagon their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God have delivered Samson, Samson our enemy, into our hand. Verse 24, and when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God have delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make a sport. In other words, they wanted to make fun, fun of him. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. Now watch this. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of, the, of men and women, and all the, the lords of the Philistines were there. And they were upon the roof, about 3,000 men and women, that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called, now watch this, verse 28 is a key verse here, is the key verse. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be, be once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Hallelujah. So we're starting right there. I, I'm going I'm to keep on going because this is important. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. Verse 30, and Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Key, right there. And he bowed himself with all his might 
and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Did Samson commit suicide? He asked the Lord to give him the strength to push the pillars down, knowing full well that he was going to die in the process. So let me ask you a question. Did he commit suicide? Did he ask the Lord to allow him to commit suicide? I want you to think about that for a moment. Because that was spiritual. That, that, was, that was death. Now, you can have a lot of takes on this. Samson, when he was anointed by God, as one of the judges, he had been given power to be able to defeat the enemies of Israel. Now, this is the thing. Samson had the Spirit of God upon him. It would come upon him at different times. And we know it wasn't upon him all, all the time because he did some stuff that was very questionable. Sleeping with women, doing, doing crazy stuff like that, doing stuff that was not. We know it was not of God. All right, but we know the Spirit of the Lord came upon him at different times. So fast forward, ask yourself again, did Samson commit suicide? Did he ask the Lord to allow him to kill him, according to Scripture? So fast forward, New Testament believer. Can a person who is truly born again commit suicide? Now, we know people who go to church can't commit suicide because that doesn't mean Christ is on the inside of them. Because just because a person goes to church, that doesn't mean anything. We see a lot of that. All right, so let's tie this together, to, and then we're going to end this segment. So can a born-again believer, tongue-talking believer, commit suicide? You might want to ask the question, can a tongue-talking believer lie? Can they cheat? Can they steal? Can they fornicate? Can they do all of these things? Can they kill somebody? We have to ask yourself, because again, these are very serious things that we need to ask ourselves. Can people filled with the Holy Ghost and walking in God do these things? And better yet, can a person who is truly saved walk away from Christ? All right? So I want you to think about that because there's an answer that lies in everything I just said. Now, we see a situation right here where Samson, in the process of killing his enemies, he died. So let me ask you a question. Would you, now it's one thing for a person to put a gun to their head and blow their brains out. It's another thing for a person to, um, to deliberately overdose on, on something, to lay themselves on a train track. Listen, many people that do these things is because of depression they, they, they have so much going on that they feel that there's no hope. And we know that there's a demonic spirit that is controlling them because the enemy hates the creation of God, which is man. And he'll do anything to abort the destiny of said individual. So those things, jumping off a building, all of these things. But let me ask you this. What would happen if somebody was trying to kill your family? and you decided to jump in front of a bullet to save the life of somebody, is that suicide? Maybe covering, maybe a soldier to save the rest of the company of troops, laying upon a, a, a landmine and allowing it to blow him up in order to save the rest, is that considered suicide? How about pulling your family out of the way of a speeding car or a train and you taking the hit. Is that considered suicide? Hallelujah. That's all giving, I mean, that's all, that's, that's all willingly, because you know when you deal with those scenarios, it's not going to come out too good. Is that committing suicide? So I want you to think about this. These, uh, these are causes, these are causes Hallelujah. But is that the same as giving your life up when you have no hope? So going back to what I said a few minutes ago, most people that commit suicide feel they have no hope. And they basically say that there is no recourse for life. And what they're basically saying is that God is not big enough to redeem their lives from where they are right now. So, like I said before, can a spirit-filled believer lie? 
Yes, they, they, it happens. Can they fornicate? Yes. Commit adultery? Can they steal in a time of weakness? Yes, they do. Do they repent? They should. But can these things happen to a person who's a tongue-talking believer? Can a tongue-talking believer get depressed? Yes. Can it come to a place where they get so depressed that they want to end it all? So, I want you to, I want you to think about this. Hallelujah. So let me ask the question again. Can somebody who is truly born again commit, I mean, I mean, commit suicide? Can a person walk away from the Lord, which ultimately is spiritual suicide? And it can also lead to, to, to natural death as well. Can these things happen? I'm going to tell you that these things are, is very much possible when a person opens up the door that they can open themselves up to be tempted by that spirit. And we have to guard against those things, which is another question. Does such said person who is born again, when they give their heart to the Lord and they decide they don't want to kill themselves, do they go to heaven? Now we see a script. We see an instance in scripture which Samson willingly died and he got permission from the Lord. The Lord had to give him the strength in order for him to do what he did. So that leads for interesting discussion, beloved, very serious discussion about all of this. But I will, I will be honest to tell you, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so like I said, the question whether, whether whether I'm going to heaven or not, it won't be because behind suicide or not, I'm not doing it. And I want you to think about this. There's a man that was my spiritual grandfather, is my spiritual grand, grandfather, matter of fact, his name is Apostle Arturo Skinner. He was living a alternate lifestyle, homosexual lifestyle. I'm gonna tell it like it is, because some people say well, that's what it was. This is before he got saved. He decided, he was getting ready to commit suicide and a voice came to him, the Spirit of the Lord came to him and told him that if you turn around, I'm going to paraphrase it, I will save you. God turned him around and God made him a very awesome apostle, so much so that so many people, they don't, they don't give him the due that he should because he, the Lord used him to affect so many different lives on the East Coast in different places. And even though he passed away in 1975, 2021, as we do this video, people still recognize and honor him. My pastor, my beloved pastor, Apostle Frankie A. Garris, came out from under his ministry. Apostle Skinner took him as a young man in the 60s, prayed over him, anointed him, and was able to groom him and set him, set him in a place where he was able to turn around and impart into me back into the mid 80s into the early 90s. And I think that's important to note. Yeah, but what happened, what would have happened had he committed suicide? I mean, you could you could make me say that somebody else could have taken his place. But the fact of the matter was, God used him. And today, I'm a beneficiary of a person who did not commit suicide. And what we want to do is we want to head off that spirit of depression because a lot of people, when they become born again, they are not told that they're going to have to fight. They're not told that they're going to have to deal with struggles. They, they got this, this, this nice, gooey, feely gospel that doesn't teach them how to fight and use their spiritual weapons. And people with the Holy Ghost are wimpy because they're not taught these things. So they get discouraged. And then, they, and then when, when the enemy isolates you, he puts you in a place where he can separate you. And then if he separates you long enough, then he can convince you to take your own life, which like which, which the difference, the only difference between suicide and murder is you're doing it to yourself and not somebody else. So I'm not going to take that chance. I'm not going to do it. I'm not I'm not going there because there's times in my life where I, I have been depressed and I've contemplated that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm telling you from a person that has been down that road. Like I said, Brenda and I have experienced those things in our lives and we do not. And, and I would not, I would strongly encourage you not to have the Samson syndrome. I would strongly encourage you. So go back to what we said before. If a person takes a, takes a bullet for somebody, if a person come, I mean, stands in front of a train to protect their people, pre people that they love, is that suicide? I want you to think about that. Because these, these are questions that have to be answered. 
You know, so giving your, being willing to give your life for a cause, is that the same as taking your life because you're depressed and you have no hope? Think about that. Oh, Kurabba Basanda, Laba Basanda. Oh, Kurabba Basia. And if anybody that's listening to me right now is on the verge of a decision of trying to take your life, we want to come against that right now in the name of Jesus. If you're not born again, we want you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this is the thing. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, understand that you're going to have to fight and be around people who are strong and not wimpy that will pray you through situations. How could We're going to take the time right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take the time right now to lead those of you that do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to the altar. We want you to know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for all my sins. I accept you into my life right now as my Lord and Savior. I give you my old life and I take my new life. I let go of bitterness. I let go of anger. I let go of hate. I let go of resentfulness. I forgive those that have trespassed against me. And I thank you that in exchange, I receive your forgiveness for all that I've done to hurt you. I accept my new life right now. I am now saved. I am now born again. I am now redeemed. In your precious name, Jesus, I thank you. And say this with me, Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That is so important. And for those of you that are born again that have been betrayed, lied on, and some of you are in a deep place of depression, whether it's due a broken relationship as far as a marriage, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, dealing with sickness of any kind. We want to come against that right now in the name of Jesus. We want to love on you. And we want you to know that you can be redeemed to turn around and be a blessing to so many other people. Do not give up your life now because you got a lot of life to live. I release an anointing over you right now. I come against every spirit of depression. I come against the spirit of suicide right now. In the name of Jesus, we break that in the name of Jesus. We cancel the assignment of every spirit that would try to abort your purpose and destiny. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we declare the freedom of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, that assignment is counseling. We declare new life. We cover you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. This is your segment. I want you to think about this segment, and I want you to listen to it again. Know, know like I said, you may not have a lot of answered questions concerning this segment, so I want you to think. But I will tell you this. It would not be a good idea for you to take your life intentionally because it's going to be based upon all the wrong criteria. Hallelujah. Now, if it's a situation, if, if, if you've got somebody that, that if, if some, one of your loved ones was in a pool and they was drowning and you didn't know how to swim, you know full well what that could very well mean. So, like I said, there's a lot of things that need to, that need to be addressed concerning this segment that we did. I want to get your comments in the, segment, in, in, in the comment section below. Let us know what your take is on this right now. This is a very powerful situation. Anybody that, you know, that would need clarity in these things, we want to work these things out prayerfully. Let us know what you think. We love you. We'll be talking to you again real soon. Be blessed, everybody.